this Thursday, February the 7th, 2019. It's the um, NBA trade deadline. I'm here with Worldwide West. My name's Dwyer. Wes, what are your top thoughts on what's happened in the NBA in the last 48 hours? Well, we can start with AD not moving. That's a lot of good things for LA. And we're not talking about Los Angeles. We're talking about the Clippers. Right, right. I, you know, I'll just say about KD, he needs to stay where he is. You know what I mean? I know he blew up at the Bay Area media. And um, I understand that uh, the press has him going all over the place and stuff like that. Um, Warriors are in a dream situation. They just blew out the Spurs, an above 500 team. I know um, a couple of guys didn't play there. LaMarcus Allrich didn't play. But bottom line, uh, DeRozan didn't play. But bottom line is the Warriors really are a done deal if everyone stays healthy this year. I don't see the team that can compete against them. So I think the big winner in all this is Golden State for simply standing pat. You know, what other teams do you feel won this uh, NBA trade season? Again, I'm going to go with the Clippers. Uh, I feel like they got a lot of cap space. They got off a lot of money off the books, something hard to do in today's NBA. And also, I think one of the big winners would have to be the Celtics because they got nobody in their way to try to pursue AD at the end of the year. Nobody to try to bid against. Everything is on them. I got to tell you, if I'm the Pelicans and I have a shot at trading with the Celtics and I have a shot at getting Jason Tatum, right, I imagine other Celtics might be available, right? Gordon Hayward, that's a contract. He's not looking like a major superstar right now. If I'm the Pelicans, I think Boston has a hell of a lot more to talk to me about than a team like the Lakers. I'll just say that. You know, and if I'm AD, I have to realize that Boston has that rich big man tradition. Yep. Right? Just like Garnett came and he would sit down with Bill Russell on camera and stuff like that. If I'm AD, I would realize, man, you know, a team that had those big men, had Kevin McHale, uh, a team that got to the Eastern Conference Finals last year, uh, Lakers aren't offering any of that. You know what I mean? Also, let's face it, too, Boston right now is like Championship City, yeah. right? Because they, they won the World Series, <laughs> they won the Super Bowl. Um, if AD comes and he can suddenly yeah. get the Celtics back on top, um, I don't know what L.A. is offering. In fact, Boston's been beating up on L.A., right? They beat up on L.A. in the uh, World Series, beat up on them in the Super Bowl. I think they're going to beat up on them tonight in the NBA, you know, so. They beat up on them on the, in the NHL as well. Yeah, so A.D. needs to think it through, man. If I were him, I know there are people whispering in his ear and stuff like that. As I said to you before, I don't think L.A. is a great place to play, the Lakers, because I think LeBron has turned off that locker room. And all I'm saying is when your hometown picked by the team, right, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball played at UCLA, um, Kyle Kuzma drafted by the Lakers, and suddenly the new guy comes in. And first, we hear reports that he and Luke Walton aren't getting along. Then we get all this stuff where all the guys that I've mentioned were named in, you know, uh, possible trades with the Pelicans. And you understand it's people behind the scenes who are orchestrating AD coming to L.A., right? He signed with LeBron's agent. How's that team going to go to war together next year? In other how words, they, 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 they have to go to war them. right now. Right. I mean, I think I think it's over for this year. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't care who the player is. When a guy is 35, even guys who have aged well, Tim Duncan aged well, right? When a guy is 35 years old, he's on borrowed time. I can tell you, I was listening to First Things First, and Chris Carter mm -hmm. was saying that LeBron's not moving like he once did, right. right? I keep telling friends privately, I think I consider LeBron retired. In other words, he's in L.A., there are a lot of business opportunities. He's a media mogul. 
I don't I don't think the guy is about championships anymore. Right. So if I'm AD Boston, you know, or other places, you mentioned the Clippers have a lot of cap space. I know the Knicks have a lot of cap space. Those are big cities. Uh, you know, I would look at them as well as more elite teams, right? If he were to go to OKC, you got Westbrook, you got Paul George. You got a team right now that's in the top four in the Western Conference. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying. You got Steven Great Adams. Defense. Great defense. Great defense. You got yeah. beef underneath. You got uh, Andre Robertson on the roster, right? So when he's healthy, he'll be a force. All I'm saying is AD has choices. Unless he's addicted to a big city, I'm not sure the Lakers are the play. I'll even go further. The Bulls just picked up Otto right. Porter. Now, the Bulls aren't exactly robust right now, but if AD goes to Chicago, right, you got Zach Levine, you got Otto Porter, uh, that team's on the rise. That team, to me, has more talent than the Lakers, and it's younger talent among your chief cohorts. In other words, Otto Porter, Zach Levine, they aren't as old as LeBron James. You know, LeBron in two years. um, We just watched Tom Brady, and people say, oh, you can play till you're in 40s. Not in basketball. You know, not if you're not a big man. I'll just say that. I remember great defenders, Gary Payton at the end, looking slow, old, and sluggish. So, you know, I don't know. Let me uh, say this. What about about Toronto? Do you ever think about Toronto? you ever think maybe Toronto? They have a little cap space. You know, they have a set of players already that's really good. Was it Kyle Lowry? They have uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard. You know, well, they I let it down just, the soul. I thought and, I thought the Marcus exactly, Gasol was gay. exactly what I was leading into. Grizzlies trade Mark Gasol to the Raptors. So that being said, if you had Mark Gasol and you had AD, you guys could split the floor, and then you would also have Ka- Kawhi Leonard as great defense and Kyrie Lowry to sit there and you know get it from the field. You know, I really feel like people aren't are really outplaying Toronto. As a, as a destination spot for AD because, you know, it's just not in the limelight. As they say, it's not the first place you think of. It's cold or what have you. But if you think about the fact that Toronto still has enough room at the end of the year max for a max player, and they already have somewhat two max players, you know, and then they have room for this. And they're all, they also have Gasol for another year, I believe it is. And that's the opt-out year next year if he doesn't want to play. You would have you initially would have almost four all stars. Oh, I got to tell you too. I mean, let's say Leonard leaves, um, just for argument's sake, because he he was talking about California earlier and stuff like that. Um, if he leaves and if AD replaced him, mm-hmm. I think Toronto is a ridiculous opportunity. Obviously, if he stays and AD arrives, mm-hmm. that's a great opportunity. But if um, if he were to leave and if AD were to replace him. You and I know Toronto is a world-class city, exactly. world-class city. It's a media hub. It's a business hub. Um, it has one of the league's most passionate fan bases. You look at uh, these playoff games played by the Raptors, and they have fans waiting outside, and that's outside in the cold. You know what I mean? Freezing cold. Right. And so to me, I look at Toronto and um, – you and I think alike because I know the media wants you to believe that they're only the Knicks and the Lakers to play for. And uh, it's not so anymore, especially not in this internet world, right? Um, AD's next contract is going to be a multi year contract. And so, you know, let's say he makes a commitment to a community for a few years. And all I'm saying is, wow, on the world stage, you don't have to be in LA to have a really big profile. You know what I'm right. saying. So, you know, Especially because of all the money that they're making from TNT and ESPN with the rights. Right. You know, also, you and I are here in Northern California and Netflix is up here. I'm, I'm not even sure if the entertainment center is going to be in L.A. five years from now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'll say this, too. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was in college years ago, people <laughs> talked about L.A. like it was nightclub central. L.A. can't compete with Las Vegas right now. You understand what I'm saying? So, right. And so every generation has its own signature, stuff like that. So I'll be shocked 
if AD ever makes it to the Lakers. I'll be shocked if after the stunts LeBron pulled this year with the Lakers, guys like Leonard even want to go play for L.A. You know what I mean. Clippers, to me, are the better deal right now, and the Clippers have a bunch of money. You know, um, you also like the Markel Folks deal. Tell us about it. Yes. Well, I believe that the Sixers did a, uh, a good job of getting money off of their books with Mark L. Fultz and also ending a story that was not so good with their first round pick. You know, I believe that he had a lot of pressure in, in, um, in uh, Philadelphia because of, you know, being that first round pick. You know, he had a lot of weight on his shoulders. You have to produce. You have to be this. You have to be that. And, you know, he worked so hard that he really messed up his own shot. Or maybe something happened where he got hurt. Or maybe, you know, just mentally it just didn't work out. You know, maybe the pressure got to him. But no matter the situation, I think that it's going to be good in Orlando for them. And they and they got Simmons, like you are, like you said, you know. So And they also got, they also got you know, picks. But uh, at the end of the day, I believe it's a good trade-off for both teams because it gives Markel a chance to start off in Orlando. Right, right. I'll say the... Um... The East is wide open right now. Um, I think Philly had a spectacular, I mean, simply spectacular off-season, uh, I mean, um, trading season. For me personally, the Tobias Harris signing uh, trade is the best move because Harris, who's in his 20s still, um, is an excellent three-point shooter. He's an excellent scorer. He gives mm -hmm. them... He gives them threes on a team where Ben Simmons really can't hit a three. You know what I mean? And Jimmy Butler right. isn't yeah. a very high percentage from three. So to me, for gamblers, because Milwaukee, you're getting shorter rods with them. Toronto, you're getting shorter rods with them. I think Philly is the team that's going to deliver the most value from a betting perspective. Um, I do like what Milwaukee did in getting Morodic. Um, because he's a big man who hits threes, and they're trying to make up for Giannis's lack of a three-point game, right? So they've surrounded him <laughs> with Brogdon. Um, Milwaukee has a bunch of three-point shooters now, you know what I'm saying, that they've yeah. surrounded their superstar with, and they're spectacular defensively. Yeah. So they're going to be a problem for anyone, but I think Philly is just more talented than they are. I think Philly is more talented than Toronto. Let me say, too, Kyle Lowry in big games isn't the most reliable player in the league. You know, so to Not me, right, so to me, the fact that Philly, um, you know, picks up an elite player who everyone understands is going to command top dollar at the end of the year because he has an expiring contract. I think if Philly's smart, they try to sign him even before Jimmy Butler, mm. you know? So, yeah, I like Philly. I thought Philly came off big. Uh, the Raptors with Gasol, um, he's a great passer. I just wonder, though, whether they have enough underneath the basket. You know what I mean? Because Gasol's averaging less than 10 boards a game. Uh, they traded Valentionis to get him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Serge Ibaka is also a guy who's an outside shooter. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I just wonder if they have that Joel Embiid type guy because Philly does. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And um, I like Boston. Boston's going to be tough, but I still feel that Boston is figuring things out because Kyrie Irving might never resign with them. Uh, you and I know something... Something's being unsaid in the public, right? Because it's a salary cap league. Boston could easily step in right now and say, you know, Kyrie, here's the max for the max years. They clearly haven't done that. No. Right, right. They haven't done that. I think they understand the guy has screws in his knee. Mm -hmm. The guy's a bit of a flake. And the team would run better with a real point guard. You know what I'm Danny, saying. That's Danny Ange. Right, right. Danny knows 
that, quite frankly, the team needs a Jason Kidd because um, Marcus Smart was hitting threes tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Al Horford could hit threes. Marcus Morris could hit threes. All I'm saying is, um, you know, Gordon Hayward's neglected right now. Get him a point guard who can actually average nine or ten assists a game. That's yeah. not that's not Irving. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I if I were Boston, I you know, and I think the the NBA is entertainment. So I think they, um, you know, they understand that Irving has great numbers. He's a scorer. He's acrobatic. He hits big shots. He's a crowd pleaser, right? But crowd pleasers aren't the same as guys who win games. You know what I'm saying? What so, about the guys that win games? How do you feel about KD's rant? At the you know what? I'm not worried about it. Uh, I really feel that KD has made up his mind already on next year. And uh, you know I'm a Knicks fan. The Knicks can't offer him anything remotely close to what he has with the Warriors. Let me just say, too, that the Lakers can't. You know, KD understands there's dysfunction in that Laker locker room now. LeBron's turned everyone off. Also, LeBron's going to be 35 years old next year. LeBron doesn't have the future that Steph Curry does. You know what I'm saying. So, also, if you're thinking about moving to the Knicks, now that the Knicks have gotten rid of poor Zingas, think about that. <laughs> so you're moving to an empty house. Um, you know, you have to really believe in Kevin Knox and a bunch of young guys, right? Right. If you move to the Knicks, the East now without LeBron has gotten hyper competitive, right? We're here talking about Milwaukee, best record in the East, mm -hmm. right? Toronto loaded, picking up Marcus Gasol. By the way, Milwaukee, the last time they ever were first time in the East with 40 games this at the beginning of the season, guess what they did? They won the championship that year. I got to tell you, I was looking at the metrics on these teams, and I was astonished by how good defensively the Milwaukee Bucks are. Um, I still don't believe, just because, you know, Ben Simmons is probably the best rookie I've seen in several years, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm a child of the 70s, so I, I like when I see a big man, and um, Joel Embiid is a big man. Mm -hmm. I just don't believe that Milwaukee has enough Not to yet. compete. Not yet. Well, the trade deadline's passed, Holmes. I mean, what <laughs> what's well, going to happen you know, this year? No, you not know. yet. I mean, I mean, I'm talking in terms of this is a big free agency season. You know, not just this. Now, as far no, as no, the no. season, you know what I mean. This is a big. This is a big free agency coming up. So they might not have it this year. This is steps. This is baby steps. You know what I mean? Baby steps. Because they they're starting. What are they starting to do work on lately? They're starting to work on their defense. You can see that when they played the Warriors. You know they're starting to clamp up a little bit, and the Warriors were shooting threes that day, so you, you know that's 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 just something to look at. And and, and another thing is, you, you they they had the uh, they had the uh, NBA All Star picks live on TV today. I just wanted to mention that. Did you want to know who uh, Team uh, Giannis was? Oh, oh sure, go oh. ahead, tell me. Okay, we have Steph Curry, Paul George, Campbell Walker, and Joel Embiid. Do you want to know who Le Team LeBron was? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. first, first pick, I just want to remind you, first pick was KD, second pick, Kawhi, I don't know, Kyrie, then Kawhi, and Harden. So that's that team versus the other team. And guess who his first pick for the reserves were? I know you're going to know. I know you're going to know. No idea. AD? Uh, who? And you see? You did know. See, there you go. You knew already. Yeah, I, man, I let's say this. Um, I, I think the MVP this year is clearly James Harden. I mean, clearly James Harden. And uh, this whole idea of guys picking guys and guys like James Harden slipping in the draft, I don't know why the NBA thinks that that's a good thing. He you went know? second to last. Oh, it's ridiculous. I don't even know, quite frankly, why the players want it. Because the problem is these players have to go out and recruit people. You remember the Hampton Five with the Warriors going to recruit Kevin Durant. And um, 
you don't want to be recruiting a guy and the guy then saying to you, hey, man, you know, you picked me fourth or something like that. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, I, you know, if I'm LeBron, I don't want to go on record making decisions about picking guys. Also, I'll say this about Harden. Tell me offensively the weak part of his game. How he has- he's he's a better assist man than Kyrie Irving. I don't even, I don't in in what world does Kyrie Irving go before James Harden? I don't, oh, I don't yeah. understand that. I don't. You know. you know who also went before him? So, so it's a bunch of politics. Mm-hmm. Giannis was the first pick with Steph Curry. LeBron's was KD. KD went for or LeBron went first. So he picked KD first out of everybody. And then Giannis you went know, second instead. You know what's going on there because your boy LeBron, LeBron's always thinking. He's deliberate. He's rehearsed. So he knows, oh, KD's going to be a free agent. So KD's his first pick. Who was his second pick? Kyrie? Another Kyrie. Guy was, oh, come on, <laughs> Come on, that's not basketball. That's politics, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, come it's true. It's true. Oh, come on. And then, and then you know who his second pick was for reserves? Out of all, out of Dame, out of Russ, out of Russell Westbrook, LaMarcus Aldridge, Damian Lillard. His second pick was Clay Thompson. For reserve, for too, reserve. You know, reserve. Uh, right, I... I'll say this, too, about Westbrook. Well, I think Westbrook's missing the emotional side of the game, right? In other words, I think he shoots too much. He keeps chucking up threes. He's not a three-point shooter, even when he had KD on his team, right? So I don't think Westbrook is totally in tune with the game. But how's a guy averaging a triple-double? And he's not one of the first picks (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because those are reserves. Because they remember uh, Russell was a reserve, so the, right. so the, the starting were uh, KD, Kyrie, Kyrie, uh, Kawhi, Harden. So out of all those that I sh- I said to you, out of KD, Kyrie, Kawhi, Harden, Steph, uh, Paul George, Kemba, and Joel Embiid, those were the starting picks, right. and then they had the reserve picks. And the, and the reserve pick, the first reserve pick for LeBron was AD, and the first uh, and the second pick was Clay. So it kind of looks like. You know, reserves over these are over Russ, Lamarcus Aldridge, and Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard, by the way, is having an all star year. That's why he's on the reserves. Oh, no, that's that's why Portland is among the leading teams in the West. I'll say this too I know no one talks about Portland or Denver. Denver is a team that's well put together. They're doing well, they're right behind the Warriors in the Western Conference. But those are teams we need to consider. I think the Warriors run through the West. I think the only team with a chance to unseat them are the Houston Rockets. In fact, I like the five seeds in both conferences. I like Philly in the East. I like Houston to exceed expectations. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got to say, Portland, as long as C.J. McCollum is in the same backcourt with Damian Lillard, um, Portland is going to be a team that's going to give a lot of people problems, right? Because Portland's one of these teams that's phenomenal at home. They just can't hold up on the road. They also have a problem in the postseason for some reason. They did you know They I mean? did hang in Oracle, though. They were going point for point in Oracle. Right, right. Of course, Lillard's from the Bay Area. Yeah, he was going <laughs> so, point for point for, in Oracle. They're going point for point. Right, that's a tough team. How far do you think they get in the playoffs? You oh, think I, don't they, see, uh, I don't see them getting out of the second round. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think challenge? Who, who do you think challenges the Warriors the most for the crown in the West? Well, you know, um, it's I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just go out and say the Rockets by themselves lonely because you got to watch out for something like like the Thunder. Like I told you, their defense you they're know, well put together. They well know, put they, together. They're not. Mm-hmm. They're they're a cerebral team. You know, like that's what they are. They're not a high fly show and go. You know. You know throwing up threes, you know, they're a real cerebral team. They take a lot of uncontested shots from the, from the baseline. You know what I mean? They take, they take a lot of, they take a lot of contested shots in the paint. So even though they're contested, they're still higher numbers than uncontested shots in the, in the, from the free throw line. So, you know, they take a lot of smart moves. They make a lot of smart moves. And, you know, that's what I think. uh, That's why I think our, our team lacks sometimes is because we're so, we're so show and go, you know, the Warriors are so show and go that, 
it's like you know it's it's more of a it's more of a game like they're playing with themselves not they're not playing with the other not playing against the other team you know so it's it, i see i see um uh, Houston like you said giving us giving us a fit because one uh James Harden is basically doing something that's unheard of in the NBA this year. He's unstoppable, right? Like because he's going to get to the line more than most teams. You know what I mean? Exactly. And they just yeah. got CP3 back, so you know what I mean. And they're they're about to get um they're about to get Capella back, I believe, if not today or to our next game. You know, one of the games you're going to get Capella back, and there that just seals up your your inside. So once again, they become the exact same team minus Trevor Ariza. The same team that took us seven games last year minus CP3. So no, I'm a, I'm a Warriors fan, no question about it. If they had CP3, I don't think we could have took them that year. Yeah, I gotta say too, um, Eric Gordon is a guy who's kind of like Steph Curry. In other words, there's gonna be that game in a short series where Eric Gordon hits four or five threes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, if he can augment CP3 and Harden. Um, that version of the Rockets is awfully hard to beat. I also feel Capella um, and Nikolai Jokic, the guy with Denver, they're two of the most underrated players in the league. You know, I think the league right now, we're all in love with three-point shots and stuff. I don't think we really appreciate um, high field goal percentage uh, shot blocking big men like we once did. You know what I mean? So I think... Um, I think Capella gives Houston something that Portland just doesn't have. Right. And uh, right. So, I, you know, Denver, to me, just doesn't have enough. OKC, okay, I'll <coughs> see. They're phenomenal in terms of not turning the ball over. Um, they're phenomenal in terms of getting steals. But I wonder, when it's a nationally televised playoff game, is Russell Westbrook going to defer as he should to Paul George? It looks it looks to be that way lately. You could still you could see Paul George having an MVP caliber season. Oh no, right. You He's having a great it. year. You can right. see it. And you know, Westbrook has been deferring to Paul George in later parts of the game. The only time that I ever see him take it to the take it to the hoop himself is when he's on a fast break. If you ever notice that when he's on a fast break, he doesn't he doesn't defer at all ever to anybody, no matter who you who, no matter even if he was playing with KD again. I mean, right. KD will tell you if he's on a fast break, he's going all the way. That's just what it is. So, but you know, <laughs> but I I really feel like, you know, if if they're already they're already meshing as a team, you can see it. You can see the cohesion, and 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 that right there is scary because you know what that reminds me of. That reminds me of the 2015 Warriors. Because right. strength in numbers, you know, they have a good bench, you know, and they're 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 really they're deep. So they're I, I think it's I, like I said, I think it's Houston and OKC. Who do you think is going to run the East? You know, Philly. I'm put it this way. Um, I think Philly and Boston are the two best teams, and um, you know, I just think that Philly just has it together a little bit more than does Boston. I just think that uh, the expectations in Boston are a little bit big. I think that um, Irving's a little bit of a flake. I think uh, they're not getting the most out of Gordon Hayward. You know what I'm saying. So I actually like Philly as the gambling play right here. You know, mm -hmm. you need a part of a position on Boston. But I like those two teams over... Milwaukee, which has a better record right now. Yeah, and definitely. Right. And you, know, you know what I mean? You know who, you know like, was, I like you know Philly. Who was their MVP that year when they they won that championship? I just remembered. Uh, Lou Alcindor? No, sir. That would be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay. Okay. Well, keep in mind, did, did Kareem call himself Kareem back then? No, he didn't. Back then, he was called. Lou Alcindor, right? No, sorry, sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, right, right. No, big guy, UCLA. Maybe he was Kareem behind the scenes. People yeah, who knew. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what they. That's what they called him. I'm sorry. My apologies. Good knowledge. Oh, oh, no worries. Phenomenal. No worries. No, no, no worries at all. Who do you like in the East? 
Um, right now, like you said, I I I want to I want to say I want to say the Celtics because even though you you've argued against it, which was great, which was fabulous, you you made all your points. I still feel like the cohesion in that team is really working. Danny Ainge is really making magic behind the scenes. The fact that they were even in play for the KD for the uh, AD shows shows everybody on their team and especially their fan base that they're trying to make moves. They're trying to become better. They're trying to win because once once again, like you always say, it is Boston. Boston is all they do is win, win, win. So <laughs> right now, yeah. <laughs> so you know, and it's 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 really you know it's a real eye opening situation as far as the fact that they were trying to get AD and they have Kawhi. So what does that are they they have a Kyrie? So what does that mean that they were willing to get rid of Kyrie to get AD because they can't have both of them on their team? That's just the way the clause is for their contracts because they're both rolling on rookie contracts, not rookie contracts, but their first contracts, I believe it was, or something like that, where they cannot they cannot both be on the same team. So that means that they would have to ship off Kyrie to get AD. So that's kind of a message to Kyrie that, hey, everybody's expendable. And that's why he made those comments three days ago when they asked him in, 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 the, in the coverage at the end, you know, how do you feel about staying in, in – um, you know, in a uh, uh, in a Celtics uniform, he says, "I feel like I don't owe any, I don't owe shit to no one." You know, no, the reason I, why I, I think that. he's gone. I think um, they're uh, covering it up. Something happened where um, he at first said he wanted to be a Celtic right months ago, and I'm guessing Danny doesn't want to commit big money to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he, you know, he's as good as gone. I'll say that. Yeah. One man's opinion, you know. One man's I'll opinion, this, another man's opinion. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? You 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 think so too? Yeah, I like I said, that's that's what was apparent. Well, you kind of did that when you put yourself in play for AD, because even even Kyrie knew they can't both be on the same team. It's just not. It's in the in in their contracts. It's stipulated. They like somehow they both can't play on the same team because they're on the certain contracts. They have to stay. They have to be either or. So if they're in play, if they're in play for AD, that's kind of a red flag for Kyrie. Like, hey, we're willing to get you, get rid of you to get AD. So you know, yeah, you know, I gotta say it too. AD is overvalued right now, right? Because he, um, first off, I don't see Kyrie going to New Orleans because New Orleans isn't a big enough market. Doesn't have a lot of Fortune 500 companies based in the state of Louisiana. Let's face it, too. If he goes to New Orleans, he'd be the second best guard on that team. Uh, Drew Holiday is a better guard mm-hmm. than AD. One plus win and something like seven. Um, why are people so certain that he's the missing piece? Because I do think he's a hell of a player. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't hit threes. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not sure if he would fit in with the Golden State Warriors. I really right. am not. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I wonder what happens if Boston does win the East. Mm-hmm. Let's say Boston wins the East, loses to the Warriors in the finals. Does AD then decide to be become KD? Right, because it was under exactly that kind of situation that KD then joined the uh, Golden State Warriors. Yep. You know, does does AD still join Boston if Boston wins the East? If I'm Danny Ainge, do I even want that? Because do I win more games with AD or Jason Tatum? Right, because I, I, I'm going to go with AD. I'm assuming guys know. like that are going to have to be traded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'm going to go with AD on that one because I just feel like he's more versatile. You know what I mean? He's, he's a much bigger guy. You know, he's, he can make he can make he can make his own shot just like just like Tatum, but he's got more experience in, inside the paint. You know, he can really back people up. He's got that old school feel. You know, I think that's the reason why people want AD. But since you meant since you mentioned the Warriors, if I may, how sure. do you feel about how do you feel about the Warriors talking about Wes Matthews as soon as he gets bought out? They feel like he would be an absolute addition to the team. But whose spot will he take though? That's the question. Yeah, but you always have that twelfth man, don't you? Um, you know, the, you know, and Matthews hits threes. 
And um, the guy from USC, Nick, what was his last name last year? Um, he could take his spot because some of the guys on the Warrior bench, Sean Livingston, for example, really can't hit threes. Long He's a two- in the tooth. Right. Long in the tooth. So if I were the Warriors, I'd leap at the opportunity to get Wes. I'm not sure if you can re-sign Wes because Wes has made big money in the past. You know what I'm saying? But as a rental, I would definitely grab Wes Matthews. Yeah, you know, yeah, why not? What's, what's the downside there? You know? Yeah, there really is no downside, I guess. You're right. Now, the question I ask is, if the talks of uh, Boogie Cousins sitting, sitting in so well with the Warriors, he's willing to take another minimum just to play with them another year just so he could up his value. Is that a good idea? That is what You know what? Um, guys say a lot of things in February. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the year, Boogie is a guy who I'd be interested in at least as much as AD if my doctors looked at his Achilles and felt that it was healed. You know what I mean? Because I think Boogie, um, Boogie has a better three-point shot than AD. Uh, Boogie is more of a presence under the basket than AD. Absolutely. Uh, Right. And so to me, it's like AD's in a bubble right now. Teams teams want to get better. AD's one of the best players in the league. Um, I don't think folks are looking at it as a value proposition right now. You know what I'm saying? As I said, the uh, Boston Celtics have Al Horford yeah. under contract. You, you have a big. Marcus Morris is better from three than you think. Yes. You know what I'm saying. Um, they have some other bigs. If if I'm them, do I want to upset the salary apple cart by bringing in AD when I already have a big man presence on that team? You know, Horford, Horford's better from three-point range, quite frankly, than AD is. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying. He's right. It's so- an actual threat. Now, what I'm saying is they were talking about um, – I heard Joe Lacob and Peter Gruber both talk how they're going to spend – Ridiculous money this offseason to over oh, the luxury tax. That, you know, that, you know the that money taxes, has to be spent. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Their mm-hmm. luxury tax, if they go over the luxury tax, they're guaranteed going to have to spend over $200 million. You know what, folks Folks need to understand that back in the day, um, Eddie DeBartolo used to spend ungodly sums, right? Um this is what owners used to do. It's salary caps are relatively new. Now, if I'm a uh, Lake up, um, I want to pay Boogie Cousins. I don't want any guy in the locker room who's a superstar who's badly underpaid. I actually want sustainability. So if I were them, I would come to the players and I would say to KD, hey, we're offering you the max. For the max period, it's time, right? A big man, a seven-footer, I know he's listed at less than that, but a seven-footer with his shot is going to age well, right? He's going to age better to me than, let's say, a guy like LeBron James, right? So um, I would pay the max to him. I would try to pay the max to Boogie Cousins. What about Clay you Thompson? Know? You know, um, Clay's a key part of the team. I'm not sure if I would pay him what I'm paying KD. Maybe I pay him more than I'm paying Boogie simply because of loyalty, what the guy has done for me in the past, right? He's the warrior. Uh, Boogie is the late arrival, right? Mm. And so, um, you know, but those are the guys I pay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave the building, quite frankly, and issuing checks. The Warriors have a delicate balance right now. Um, Think about it. They don't have a guy like a LeBron who shows up, wants the head coach fired, you know, has guys in the locker room feeling that they're about to lose their jobs on the team, their positions Sitting on on the the edge of the bench all the way on the other side. Right, sitting on the edge of the bench and... All the press conferences, he's the center, he's the person the press wants to talk to. So his story gets out, not Lonzo Ball's story. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, so so if I'm the Warriors, uh, this is a historical team. I 
I wouldn't want bad guys unless it's guys on the periphery. You know, Wesley Matthews comes to me, great. You know what I mean? I would I would say, okay, sure, you want to be on the side. I would pay Boogie. If Boogie's willing to take less money, I would oh, say he Boogie. Totally said he's willing to. Totally said. He's you willing know to. what? I would come in. I'd say Boogie. We'll pay you twenty five million. Have Boogie know. Have Boogie know that he's getting the twenty five million. I'm getting hit with this luxury tax because of the deal. Have him understand we value you so much that we'll get hit with the luxury tax. Understand the payoff for Latham, and no one really thinks about the economics. Uh, Remember, it's three hundred Warriors- million. It's three hundred million for their for their for their their spending cap for the total everything. So it's like ninety million that you could spend on top players, I believe, or something of that matter. So if you're so if you're spending over three hundred million, and you're going to have to spend over another two hundred million just to keep that team together. I believe that it's worth it. One because oh, what, is, what, what is the new stadium? What is the new stadium called? The Chase. Chase. Stadium. So right, it's, Chase. They're, they're printing money out there in San Francisco right now. I'm telling you. They're they're, they're printing money, and all I'm saying is you've won uh, three rings, right? Um, this is an opportunity to stretch that yeah. to five or six. Yeah. You're not you're not going to be in this position again. Yeah. Perhaps for the rest of Lakers' tenure, you know what I mean. So yeah. just like Celtic fans, remember the Bill Russell days. Um, you're already at the Shaq and Kobe three ring part. You know what I mean. And um, my point too is have a team that fans can get attached to because the players have been there a long time, mm-hmm. right? It's it's not the same if Clay and Draymond leave. You know, you want the image of a team that has been together, aging together, winning rings together. That's what they had in San Antonio. You remember um, Tony Parker. You remember um, the Argentinian guy. I forget his name. Manu Ginobili. Ginobili Manu Ginobili, right. Tim Duncan. Uh they were in several finals together, right? And so to me, if I'm an owner, that's what I want to do because the economics works out. You're going to get a huge appreciation in the value of the franchise over time. In football right now, in terms of jersey sales and stuff like that, the Dallas Cowboys, who haven't won a Super Bowl for decades, right? Multiple decades. The Dallas Cowboys are, you know, very popular with fans. The fans travel well. Um, you know, they they make a lot of money. Um, Troy Aikman is in the booth. Tony Romo's in the booth. Jason Witten is in the booth, mm-hmm. right? Players get opportunities. Michael Irvin is on NFL um, Network. Cowboys are hopelessly overrepresented in the media. Um And I believe that's all because in the 1960s and 70s, you had Bob Lilly, you had the Cowboys in Super Bowl II, you had Roger Staubach, Tony Dorsett, right? Warriors have an opportunity to build a generational legacy like that Mm -hmm. because Curry is a transformational player, right? Suddenly, we're looking at threes. Suddenly, it's effective field goal percentage. Suddenly, all of these teams, Milwaukee, Denver, or Chuck Houston, they're chucking up a hell of a lot of threes. You know suddenly, suddenly, Chuck admits that a shooting backcourt can win a championship. Oh, no, right. Oh, no. That's, that's exactly right. You know, old-timers like Chuck thought it was a gimmick. That's how revolutionary it was. Right when you first saw the Warriors coming down on breaks and guys pulling up for three, you thought, "What the hell's going on here?" I remember yeah. the Warriors fired Mark Jackson. People said, "Gee, how could you do that?" Jackson got you to the playoffs. You remember that? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you saw them with Steve Kerr, and they were chucking up all these shots, yeah. and you thought, "What the hell is this?" Yeah. And but this worked. So, so if I'm Warrior ownership. I'm thinking about the Cowboys. I'm thinking about the Steelers, another team that built the brand in the 70s. Yeah. And it's carried. You know what I mean? Isn't that why we're in love with L.A.? It's not because of the current cast. It's because yeah. of Magic. It's yeah. because of Will. It's because of Jerry West. 
right? Throughout you know, Tinder. Right. It's it's because of guys back then. Right. That's the point. So, um, you know, view it as a down payment. And let's face it, too. These guys have to know with sports betting, with the Internet, shows like this, I believe owning a sports team is going to be a hot investment for years. So if I owned a sports team and if I had a crown jewel team, that's a team that, you know, can just blow out San Antonio like the Warriors did. Think about it. The Warriors got a sweep in the NBA finals. Year before that, lost one game. <laughs> right? One game. In other words, they've won eight of the last nine NBA finals games. Yeah. Right? If I had that, I would not let Boogie Cousins leave the building. Seriously. And you know, I think you ingratiate yourself to the players when, you know, Boogie says, hey, I'm willing to accept less money. I say, no, 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 no. I'm paying you $25 million. And then he and his agent talk, and they realize that I'm paying the league big money on the back end. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, no, they said they're willing to pay that. They said they're willing to pay Oh, it. that's, that's what, what I would do. The you know, question look, is, though, are they going yeah. to, though? Are they really going to? That's what I want to know. Your opinion, one man's opinion. Absolutely. I think they are. I think the Warriors have been bullshitting us all the way through. When uh, Boogie was hurt, when we didn't know whether he could play, right? Because a big man with an Achilles, that's a recipe for disaster, right? So I believe when Boogie was hurt, they had Steve Kerr giving statements, giving management's position to the press saying, yeah, Boogie can't be here next year, right? Because we can't afford it. That was the line. Well, now we see Boogie on the court. He's everything you dreamt of and more. In other Absolutely. words, the, the, the Warriors have a playing style. So they need a big passing big man. By the way, that's why Marcus Gasol, who's averaging over four and a half assists, is such a good fit for Toronto, right? That the Warriors needed a passing big man. And a lot of guys can't pass, right? DeAndre Jordan, the Knicks center, you know, can't, can't really pass the ball. Here's Boogie, and he's a passing big man. Yeah. Who can who can get in the paint, who also hits threes. Yeah. That's what that's, right. That's that's warrior basketball in a nutshell. So I'm thinking, where are you gonna get this? Now we're we're all hot and bothered over Zion Williamson, right? Mm -hmm. Zion Williamson isn't a 6'11 guy. In other words, I don't see the equivalent <laughs> of Boogie Cousins coming out in the draft. And let's face it, DeAndre Ayton, last year's first pick of the draft, he's a nice player, but he doesn't have Boogie's skill set, right? Boogie's leading breaks. Boogie's dribbling out, out by three. Boogie's a great screen setter, and that's crucial for Clay Thompson. Mm -hmm. And Boogie backing him down, that's really good, too. Right. And so, to me, whatever Boogie wants, he gets. I'm, I'm serious about that. Um, KD, I would lock the door. I'd say, Kevin, what can we do to sign you? Now, I agree. Teams have limited power, right? It's America. KD could easily say, look, man, uh, my contract's up. I'm out the door. Okay. You know, just like LeBron left Cleveland, right? Anyone can leave. But if I'm KD, I don't leave the building. You know, I was listening to this BS on ESPN and Fox Sports where they were saying KD just can't live with himself because LeBron James is getting more publicity than him, right? Number one, I don't buy it. I believe there are a bunch of people out there, including Skip Bayless, who quietly know KD is the better player. Just food for thought. But number two, KD is a smart man. He knows he's younger than LeBron. He knows he has a better team than LeBron. And he's you know about to get saying. more rings than LeBron. Right, that's what I'm saying. And so if I'm KD, I have a long game. I mean, first off, I think KD is content with who he is. Right. But if KD wants more publicity, right, if he's a competitor and he wants to be better than LeBron James, right, in the public eye and stuff like that, if you have a long game and you just saw that AD didn't join LeBron in LA, right, and you also saw that Jerry West, legendary Laker, just what you said, has cleaned out the payroll in. In the Clippers. Almost, almost three max spots. Not completely, but <laughs> two max spots and a half. Think about it. So they'll contact Kawhi Leonard's representative, and they'll say, hey, what are you guys looking for? Right? The agent might say, 
we want the max for the maximum number of years. And then Jerry West will say, anything else? <laughs> you know, it's like, we got, you know, it's like, is there, is there something that I can't deliver? Right? Yeah. You know, we'll give you LA. We'll give you a richer ownership group than the Lakers have. Yeah. Right? You know, oh, by the way, in the locker room, Kawhi Leonard's going to be the man. Yeah. There's no LeBron James looking over his shoulder. There's yeah. no Rich Paul and Clutch Sports in the room. You know what and I'm they, saying? And they have a deep bench, and they don't have to give up nothing this year. Oh, and you got one of the most player-friendly coaches in the league, Doc Rivers. You know what I'm saying, right? And so, you know, a guy like Leonard's going to show up. I believe the Clippers are such an opportunity. Well, I'll just say this. I believe that ownership in the NBA is getting wealthier and wealthier. I have no doubt that if Steve Ballmer, the owner of the Clippers, were in Joe Lacob's position, he would say, fellas, we want to keep you all together. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pay the luxury tax because I'm a billionaire. Right. Yeah. I believe in the 70s and 80s, you had a lot of um, wealthy families, but they didn't have hedge fund money. You understand what I'm saying? Just the fact that we're talking about a Klein and Perkins guy, uh, Lakeup, and Gruber, right? Another guy who's involved in Elysian uh, Ventures, um, another hedge fund, right? Just the fact that we're talking about guys who are involved with more than one sports team. Mm -hmm. I think I think people will realize over time that the $200 million penalty or $300 million penalty, that's chump change. You know what I mean? Put put another way, Stan Kroenke, who owns the Los Angeles Rams, also owns the Arsenal in the um, Premier League in soccer, right? Just oh, like yeah, Salman yeah. Khan owns a Premier League team. So you're talking about guys with multiple major sports franchises in multiple major leagues, yeah. right? And so if you said to them, hey, man, we have a chance here to have a dynasty, oh, yeah. right? A dynasty. Oh, yeah. uh, but it's going to cost us 200 million or you know whatever guys will say hey that's a done deal let me let me write the check i want sponsorships i'll it's just gonna tell cost the sponsors mm -hmm. what's up what did you say it's going to it's going to cost the warriors half a billion dollars to keep the team that they have right now together just saying that it's plain and simple hey this is the bay area <laughs> That's all I can say. This is, hey, I'm this not, is the Bay I'm Area. Not Pick up the phone to call same. Larry Ellison. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> call Oracle. <laughs> right. No, call Oracle. Call uh, Larry Page. You know what I mean? Yeah. Say, hey, you know, we need a little cash infusion here or whatever. Call Tim, you Cook. Don't think call Tim Cook. Let me get a loan. Oh, my point to you is you don't think Bay Area banks aren't ready to open the vault to lend the Warriors money? Forget it. No, I, yeah, I don't. It's it's a tragedy, honestly. It, it it's it would be an epic tragedy if the Warriors fell apart for financial reasons. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That'd be and I'll say this too, Blake, uh, just so people are clear here, Steph Curry, who signed a deal that wasn't a great deal before his last one, was willing to take less money on his current deal. And Lake up, who understands this is the centerpiece of the franchise. Uh, Lakeup said, "No, no, I'm not. I'm not paying you less money. It's it's management that stepped in and gave Curry more than his agent was asking for. Yeah. They gave him the max deal because they understood. You know, you have made this possible. You have put us on the map. People are going to remember the Warriors for a unique style of play that you brought to the team. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they understood too. You know, more than forty percent from the field." career from three mm. they understood this guy's a hall of famer we don't want him ever feeling that he's getting less than what he deserves you know what i mean they need to have the same attitude with kd the attitude has to be we just lost to lebron in the finals you came here guys like peyton manning were mocking you at the space you know yeah. What I'm saying? Yeah. You, you came here and we're grateful you know, here's the max. If if they can't pay him the max for whatever reason, you know, for the length of time, say, well, here's the max for three years. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And then see what the guy has to say. But 
You know, yeah. tell why, me about why football. though? Why though? Why is KD um, not signing the long term deal now? Because he says he says he goes off and he says it has nothing to do with anything, and it had, but yet it affects the team for sure. Obviously, Draymond completely came out of the closet with it. He said, you know, it's you know, it's he, he says, and that's the reason why KD said, "I'm out." You saw the you saw the yeah. The, I the I get the feeling a lot's happening in that Warrior locker room because uh, the other day too, and I was surprised by this, Clay Thompson. Uh, said that, you know, he might be open to playing for the Lakers, right? And I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, he, uh, you know, he, that he might be open. And I I just think there's stuff happening behind the scenes that we don't know about. Um, but I do think that Durant knows what he wants to do right now, right? Mm-hmm. And I I don't get the feeling, you know, because Durant has flatly said he doesn't want to play with LeBron, uh, he says he doesn't know who's floating these Nick stories, right? Um, so question, question. Why does Katie look so guilty when he's saying it, though? No, no, right, right, right. Why, right. You know. he because why is he going, why is it, well, well I don't know, I didn't want to talk for nine days to the, to the media, but the one time that I am going to talk, it's going to be about these Nick stories. Hmm. No, no, right, right. I, I, I have to say, too, KD can end it by just signing a Warrior contract. In other words, if I'm stressed, if every time I go someplace, they're like, the Knicks, the Knicks, you know, wouldn't I just say, oh, to hell with this. Let me just sign the Warrior contract now. They're all, they're all, they're all here. Sign. <laughs> right, right. I would just sign the Warrior contract. I'm locked in and stuff like that. Because so there's um, probably validity to what Draymond is saying. You know, it, it, it could be um, for leverage reasons. In other words, um, there's strategy involved. In other words, I'm a free agent. Warriors come to me, they're prepared to give me good money, right? Um, I understand that being with the Warriors gets me great money off the court. Um, at the same time, I understand that Clay Thompson is unsigned, right? Um I believe Draymond's only signed for another year or something yeah, like, like 2020. that. Right. right. And so if I'm KD, maybe I say, you know what? Let me wait so I can see if Clay's going to stay. You know what I mean? So I can see if Boogie's Achilles is actually going to hold up. So I could see if Boogie's a good teammate, right? Because these guys... These guys know the other guys in different contexts. Now Boogie's in the locker room and stuff like that. So I believe that's what's going on. I don't think it's a AD situation where, you know, you want out, you know, you have a secret list of teams that you're willing to play for. Yeah. And you're expecting a deal. Right. I don't I don't think it's that situation. So I could be wrong. You know what I mean? I could be wrong. I did see a little. I did see a little uh, uh, Instagram post of E40, Jamarcus Cousins, and Draymond Green playing dominoes. So you can see there's continuity between those two, but I just don't feel like there's continuity between between Draymond and KD and Clay and Steph. Like I think that Steph is the glue that's keeping all of them there. Like if Steph, you, you see, you take Steph out of the picture. You see the turmoil that turns into what we call the Warriors. No, no, I agree with that. I'll say this, though. Draymond, people need to understand the personality. This is a guy who privately has given his alma mater, Michigan State, millions of dollars. I don't think the guy is about um, money and fame. I think this is a guy who's about exactly what the Warriors are about, strength in numbers, um, winning championships, and stuff like that. And so if he leaves, they will have kicked him out. I don't think Draymond will ever leave the Warriors. You know what I mean? I'll agree KD probably doesn't come across as having that level of commitment to the franchise. But it's different because Draymond's been there for years. You know what I mean? Draymond so remembers Boogie, Boogie the team wasn't it. quite. Boogie has it, and he's, he fit in like a shoe. Right. Oh, no. Boogie, all I... All I could say about Boogie is uh, the more you watch him, the more you understand this team's historical. Um, yeah. I think I think this team's better than the '73 win team. You know yeah. what I mean? I, you know, yeah. and right. And I think Boogie's a guy. I see Boogie sacrificing stats 
to hook up teammates and stuff like that. Uh, I'm sure the teammates have figured it out. You know what I mean? So I don't think Boogie's going to leave. Um, there's a story about how Boogie needed socks. Apparently with the Pelicans, they charged the players for extra socks, right? With the Warriors, you just got the extra socks. You know what I mean? And so Boogie has to understand he's in one of the highest priced parts of the country. Highest yeah. priced. This is Fortune 500 Central, right? Uh, the Lakers can't offer him anything remotely resembling this. The Clippers are rebuilding, right? So L.A. is off the map. You know what I'm saying. And so if I'm him, by the way, he's very good friends still with A.D., Yes. Right, the uh, two guys, and so who knows? But but if I'm him, I never leave the Warriors. So yeah. the fact that he's friends with Draymond doesn't surprise me. He strikes me as having a Steph Curry type of personality, where he knows he's dominant, mm -hmm. but he's about being part of a team that helps him win. You know what I mean? You're not going to find a better setup than right here, right now. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I couldn't imagine the brother going to a team like Phoenix. They're talented, but it's young gun central, right? Devin Booker, uh, DeAndre Ayton, right? Yeah. I think Boogie wants to play with guys who are hitting their primes, vets who can win today. You know what I'm saying? And so, they're always going to have a prefla of veterans that would like to come and win. That's where they have the key. That's where the key falls in. Because remember, we have a we have a whole prefla of people that wanted to play in. Lakers uniforms when they were winning championships. I like right. Bob McAdoo, right? Bob McAdoo. <laughs> right. You know? Right. So. right. I remember guys joining the Lakers. <laughs> you know, so. they're not gonna go, they're not gonna go, hey, Gary Payton was the champion with the Lakers. No, they're gonna be like, hey, I remember him killing it back in the days when he was playing for the Sonics when he was with Shot Kemp. You know what I'm saying? People forget those 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 moments that you you kind of not want to say ring chase, because that's such a such a traverse word. You know, I think the, the more <laughs> You know what I mean? The more, the more, the word that fits it better is that they're 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 trying to win. You know what I mean? They're trying. They're trying not to cap their careers. David yeah. West with the Warriors, right? Yeah, yeah. White chocolate with the Miami Heat with Thank Gary you. Payton. You remember they they picked Thank him. You. Today. Thank you. Right. I think I think um, you and I are in the Bay Area, so we've seen Warrior games. We've seen Boogie. I think in the playoffs, it's gonna shock the rest of the country. You know, when they see the Warriors with a big man who can run the court, you know, you know, when they see Boogie whipping passes and stuff like that, I yeah. think they're, you know, I think people are going to realize, whoa, you know, this is 80s level basketball. You know, this is when Boston had McHale. You know, this yeah. is when Detroit had James Edwards, Lambeer, Rick Mahorn. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, and so it's, 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 it's going to be big. So, and I think if they win the ring, the other guys, they've won rings before. DeMarcus has it. So that'll be a big moment for him. Tell me about your thoughts on the Super Bowl. Uh, then we'll close out because I see we're over an hour here. Uh, let's see. I thought that the Super Bowl was a lackluster Super Bowl, but it was great for yeah. defense. I think it was a great defensive struggle. I think New England really showed their true guts. I think that L.A. got hit in the mouth, just like you know some people predicted, but I didn't think it was going to be that bad. They got, they got hit in the mouth, and they didn't know how to recover. You know, I really feel like their defense kept them in the game. That's the only reason. And if you would have told me that, that at the end of the game, L.A. would have held New England to 13 points, I would have put my money on the Rams. Oh, I got to tell you, man. I, uh, You know, young guys sometimes are in over their heads. And uh, Jared Goff left this game on the table. Because um, that Brandon Cooks play in the back of the end zone, he's open for at least 10 yards before he gets there. That should have been a touchdown. That would have given them the lead late. Also, the play Tony Romo pointed out, where the guy's wide open with no one around him, and uh, Goff just couldn't see him. Um, I just got the feeling that as good as the Rams defense played, Goff left more than that on the table. You know, because Brady had an off game. Patriots, I thought the Patriots were the better team. But uh, the Patriots, just like they did in the Chief game, just gave the Rams an opportunity to hang around. Mm -hmm.
and Goff could have done better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Also, I don't understand how Todd Gurley is that good catching balls out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. And you mean to tell me if my offense has stalled and I'm down at three points, right, <laughs> and I have a thoroughbred yeah. running back, don't I at least start to, you know, throw him the ball and stuff like that? It would be like watching the Cowboys with Zeke, and they're losing, and Zeke hardly gets the ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, let's go with whatever we have. You know what screen I'm saying? Pass, screen pass, screen pass. Oh, screen pass, right. I would have screen passed it, screen passed it, then tried to go deep. I don't know what happened to Woods, the wide receiver for him, but um, I just think Goff was too traumatized. Um, this is why I always tell people, when you're betting on a Super Bowl, uh, consider – um, the experience of the quarterback. Young guys just don't do that well in Super Bowls from the quarterback position. Uh, Russell Wilson won a Super Bowl um, at 25. But people need to realize that's a Super Bowl where they jumped all over, you know, uh, Denver, right? Yeah. Jumped all over Peyton Manning. Uh, you remember the early safety or whatever it was in that game. All I'm saying is Goff would have been okay if the Rams jumped out to 21 zip, you know what I mean? But the fact that it's a slow first half finished him. You yes, know, he sir. couldn't handle the pressure. The, the their offensive defense, line's their never been good all year. couldn't handle the pressure in the fourth quarter either. If you noticed, they, they slowed down real bad. Let me say, too, uh, McVay, you had a young quarterback, you had a young coach. Um, if Goff is traumatized, I feel – Older coaches with a little bit more experience would shorten the routes. Don't have Brandon Cooks running deep down the field, right? Have Gurley, you know what I mean. Have the tight end, you know, have it be a dink and dunk type thing because Brady wasn't throwing the ball deep that much. In other words, the roles should have been reversed, right? Mm -hmm. McVay should have said, hell, I need to do what Brady's doing. I need to have some guy running Edelman routes, you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, just these quick slant type things because my QB is a young guy who's breathing heavily, who's running for his life, and who's missing wide open receivers. Mm. So, you know. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're over an hour. Any last words? I'll give you the final take. Uh, I believe that the XFL will be back. I hear that they just <laughs> – uh, hired a coach. I don't know. Oh, what Bob Stoops. Or anything. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, this coach with the yeah. Dallas franchise. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Yes, sir. So that's my final take. The XFL will return. Hey, keep in mind, we have the Alliance of American Football. Both of us need to study that because we need to talk about that. That's happening this season. <laughs> that's happening right now, in fact. Isn't so I think, that? yeah, so I think the AAFL, uh, if, if I said that right, the XFL, I think football is going to break big because, um, you know, in the spring, because gambling's now legal, oh. you know? So I think before, right, USFL failed and stuff, but they didn't have the backdraft of gambling. And one of the stories of the Super Bowl is that gambling in Rhode Island and some of these other places on fire. So, oh you know, <laughs> all right, man. Thank you for having me again. Oh, come on, dude. Next week, we'll uh, get to the NFL futures and stuff like that. Let's OK. All right. You got it. Hey, we're on Wide West, folks. Thanks for stopping Thanks. by, player. Uh, all right.